Hello everyone, here is a short video looking at different ways of making sketches from your windows. The same things, the same lessons here can be applied to sketching anywhere of course. We're all indoors a lot at the moment and sketching views from our windows seems a good thing to do. So, um, sketching from your window. Well here I am in my studio in Burnt Island, you can see here, dirty mirror. Uh, there's my studio behind me and the view out the window which I'll just show you briefly Houses across from me and then the bin hill the bin B-I-N-N -N, with rain clouds coming in so Camera back on my Heath Robinson camera mount Okay, sketching from your window I'm just going to use very basic tools today, pencils and a few pens. Um, the pencils I've selected are an HB, which is really the standard pencil. If you get an unmarked pencil, it probably is HB, and a 6B, which is a far harder, darker pencil. So HB. HB are good. You can get detailed line, you can also by turning the pencil on its side produce quite dark marks. 6B can't really get quite such detail in your lines but you can get brilliant dark marks so really good for shading for example. This vase. 6B bit of finger smudging. So there you go. Um, you can get all sorts of different things. This is a oil pen, oil pencil, sorry. Give it a sharpen and it gives you quite a different quality of black. And these are really good graphite sticks, graphite pencils. There is no wood in this pencil, the whole thing is graphite. So if you've got it sharpened, which I haven't, you can produce detailed lines, but you can also produce really wide black marks. Um, okay, so it can be really hard, especially if you're an indecisive person like me, to decide what to sketch. Uh, what I do when I'm out and about, but we can do this here today looking out the window too, how do you know exactly what you want to sketch out that window? So I produce a number of thumbnail sketches. Thumbnail sketch number one. These are very sh small, quick sketches. So, thumbnail sketch number one. This is going to be a view out of the window, but also showing the whole window. So there's the window frame. Here are the rooftops opposite, windows of the buildings opposite, and the hill behind. And that's all I need for thumbnail sketch number one. Well, I might want to do that, but I might want to go for a panoramic sketch, which is only looking at the very top of the roof's opposite. I'm really not putting any sort of correct detail into my thumbnail sketches. And there, that, these are the chimney pots, and here's the hill behind. You can straight away see that these are two very different sorts of sketches which could result. Um, if I was being nosy, I could decide to do a sketch just looking at a neighbour's window. This window's got frosted glass, the one I'm looking at, so I think I can get away with it. So there's another very different sketch which could, could result. Or maybe I'm not interested in buildings at all. <clears throat> I'm going to go for a squarish one here. And here is a lesser blackback gull which is standing on a chimney pot. But I'm not including the chimney pot. We've got a lesser blackback gull, hill behind, trees on the hill. Four really different sketches, all from the same scene. Then what I do is I can look at these thumbnail sketches and I can think to myself, 
Okay, well, that one's nice, that one's all right, but what I'm really interested in doing here is doing a more detailed drawing based on this one here. So it can be a way to just help you cut down the information that is filling your eyes and filling your brain and decide what you want to sketch. Trying to get my second sheet here. Okay. If you're pressing hard on your paper, put a sheet of card underneath, or even a couple of sheets of paper, and it will stop your paper, your pencil, your pens marking through to the paper underneath. So here I'm going to go for this panorama. Right, I will have some rooftops. Um, if you would like to be doing this along with me, that is great. And I'd be delighted if you share any photographs of sketches which you do. And you might like to have a look at the artist um, Winifred Nicholson, whose window paintings I absolutely love. Her window paintings are my favourite of all window paintings, and I do, I do like window paintings. Winifred Nicholson was very much painting the objects on her windowsills, vases of flowers, lovely little vases, lovely little collections of wildflowers or garden flowers. They're very worth looking at, and the. Orkney artist Sylvia Wishart is also really worth looking at for her dreamlike views out of her window, windows on Ratquick Bay on the island of Hoy in Orkney. Um, I do sketches all over the place. I really love to sketch while I'm out travelling. I love to sketch from train windows. I love to sketch on a ferry journey. I don't tend to sketch on buses because it makes me feel sick, but if you're able to then that is great, lucky you. And I do keep sketchbooks as I showed in a previous video. I have lots and lots of little sketches, I all sketchbooks, I always have a small sketchbook with me and wherever I go, whenever I go, even if I'm just going down to the shops on our high street. So here are the rooftops drawn in. And the bin, the hill behind, that's the chimney pot the lesser blackback was on, but it's gone now. There's another pair on here though, nesting. We have loads of gull nests in our, in our town. I keep track of some of them for the British Trust for Ornithology nest record scheme. Okay, um... Uh, now, there are, w there are rainbows on quite a lot of these windows, but none on the high up ones. Oh no, there's one there. And the, the hill behind this tree in the foreground, look how scribbly, look how scribbly these marks are. Do not worry about your sketches being scribbly. In fact, I feel, often, when I'm out and about, and when the weather turns bad, when rain is coming, when wind is coming, when it's already started raining. That's when my sketches and my paintings often turn out the best. Because the atmosphere that you're really experiencing with whatever weather it is, the wilder the better. It sort of seeps into the painting or the sketch. Rain-streaked watercolour, for example. So that's really the detail of the drawing. Um, and... I am now going to show you adding in some drama. I've got my 6B pencil. Now, those rain clouds which were coming in, well, they've actually blown over, but look at this. Even just that is making the scene more dramatic. Rain coming down out of those heavy, heavy clouds. But that makes the top half too heavy, so that makes me think, OK, I need to use my 6B pencil down here as well. I'm going to bring some dark, dark marks down here. OK, 
could have done really dark all the way through my sketch, but it wasn't in my head at the start. And that is what an artwork so often is, especially an artwork produced outdoors, working from real life. It's an evolving thing, and that's so exciting about it. That's what's so exciting about it. It does mean that I often come home from a sketching trip feeling really quite mad, really quite fed up, because the things that I have sketched and painted have just not turned out anything like what I had expected them to. I sit down in front of a scene and in my head zooms an image which is the finished painting. I start making that painting and it turns out nothing like the image in my head. And it can make me really rather cross. But then look at those sketches or paintings again some days later and you will often, hopefully, find that you actually like them much more than you'd realised. And sketching should also be, can also be a very relaxing thing. Try to not put any pressure on yourself. Try some little tips like doing a one minute sketch, a five minute sketch. You don't necessarily have to spend a long time on a sketch. Um, I'd like to show you also, oh yes, if I'd like a little bit of fine detail, this is a propelling pencil. So I could use this, if the lead doesn't keep breaking, to bring a bit of detail back in. These here are just suggestions of trees on the hillside. Um, hmm. Okay, biro. I've got some biro. This is a blue biro, and I'm going to put some blue biro onto the rooftop to mark out some of the slates. Why not? There really aren't definite rules in art. There are lots of different techniques to learn, but you should feel very free to experiment and do as you wish. This is becoming quite a busy sketch. little touch of red biro on that rainbow and I'll put a few more red lines in as well. It perhaps look, looks a bit odd with the bin all light in the background so in a moment I'll finish off by adding a bit to that but just down at the bottom I want to show you I'll maybe do a future video about these but these are Faber-Castell pit pens, artists drawing pens, and you get such lovely bold marks. Sometimes I'll only have my little sketchbook and a few of these pens with me, and that's all that you need to produce quite nice sketches. I'll show you them more another time. Um, okay, so the hill. No, I'm going to leave the hill light, but the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to darken up down here even further. There's an artist called Alwyn Crawshaw and a thoroughly recommend his books. He's got a brilliant book called Learn to Sketch. Here it is. Learn to Sketch by Alwyn Crawshaw. It's in the Collins Learn to Paint series. Look out for a copy of this on um, Abe Books or some other second-hand online retailer. Perhaps I'll show you a page or two. So many good ideas in here. This is something that's worth thinking about. So I'll do very quick down here. The same scene. My rooftops here. And here. 
Okay, so now, if you imagine... Not imagine, because you're looking at it. Okay, so, one scene with the sky, perhaps with just a few clouds drawn gently in. The other one, with a really dark sky like this. Look how quickly you can change the atmosphere of your sketch. If you're feeling that your sketch doesn't quite have enough to it, I really recommend turning it into a dark stormy day. And that's a sketch that I'm fairly happy to leave just about like this, just adding a bit more red. It's very hard to decide when to stop, and normally what one does is one goes too far. When you really get into sketching and into painting, you start being able to move your hand, your tool, your pencil, your paintbrush quickly like this. And that's when it gets so exciting. So you're not really having much time to think about the individual marks. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I really hope you'll enjoy doing some sketching out of your window and remember you don't need to sketch the whole scene, you can sketch a teensy little detail, that bird that you can see, that person delivering your parcel, or you can sketch the whole thing, you can sketch the windowsill itself, sketch your windowsill, the objects on your windowsill and completely change the landscape outside. Put yourself on a desert island or in a rainforest. Okay, thanks very much. See you again soon.